So one of the things that I know I as I reflect on my own PhD experience, and I'm curious how you would view it is there are a lot of parallels actually between kind of doctoral research and, and doctoral training and you know being an entrepreneur. How have you thought about some of those uh, translatable lessons from those early days to what you're doing today in building Cerebell? I think one is this open-mindedness. Because as a scientist, you have a hypothesis, but you are completely open when you go in, say, is, I, I would design experiment to prove it wrong or to prove it right. And uh, as you build up a business, and especially when you build up a company and build a business model product, from ground zero, there are so many directions you can go and have that open-mindedness and solving problems and be open to see failures and success and detect early signals, uh, fail early, pilot early. I think that's probably one of the um, biggest uh, skill sets I developed as a scientist and and, uh, was able to use that. Um, And I think another part of it is probably more psychological uh, readiness. As you know, when you when you are really when you are doing science, ninety percent of ninety nine percent of the time is failure. Most experiments don't work, right? And so I got trained so used to things don't work, and take that as the opportunity of discovery instead of being discouraged. And uh, as you are entrepreneur and building things from from ground zero, that's a very very helpful and positive. Uh, I think uh, um, just mental readiness. I think that ground zero point really resonates, at least with me personally. I don't, I don't know about you, but my, you know, my first day of uh, my PhD program, I remember our program director said, you know, your job here while you're here, if this is the realm of knowledge, is to basically create something that expands it just a little bit here. And so, if you think about, you know, building companies, it's right. You have to create something that doesn't exist, but is adding value to kind of what is beyond what is already there. So, I think that that speaks a lot to lessons learned. I think I'll go off on a limb here and say that you're very unique, not only for having a scientific training, but then after getting your PhD, instead of maybe taking a traditional uh, academic job or going to work in, in a kind of biophysics like industry area, you went to film school. Tell us about, about that de- decision. It was my early mid-age crisis. Because <laughs> For, ten, for decades, for, as I mentioned earlier, I just love science. I always thought I'm going to be a faculty and doing research somewhere. And then towards the man, end of my PhD, I feel something that's missing for me. And I wanted more, maybe closer uh, human interactions. Maybe I wanted more direct social impact. I'm not saying academic job don't offer that. Not enough for me. So I got so lost, I thought, um, what is this one thing, go, go back to the North Star, what is this one thing I really, besides science, I'm really passionate about? And believe it or not, at the time, I decided it was film. Uh, I always just love movies. Um, so I borrowed the, I, I came from a very humble family, so I actually borrowed $6,000 uh, from a friend. And then at the time, China was still very cheap. So I went to China, to Beijing Film Academy and did one year cinematography because I thought growing up in China, I never was given the opportunity to explore the artistic side. What if that is my call? So I did that and I quickly find out, no, it's not. (laughs) But it was such a a precious gift. I gave it to myself. Uh, It didn't work out. I came back to the US for my postdoc, but I would absolutely do it again, uh, even now knowing the result. Um, I feel I feel one thing I learned that uh, that was not so much in the scientific training is uh, the connection with people. Because filmmaking is all about uh, seeing people of, from almost the most humanistic way, right? Uh, of course, empathy and uh, vulnerability are the buzzwords these days, and I believe in them. But 15 years ago, when I was in graduate school, they were not buzzwords. In film school, I was able to you know, I remember doing documentaries with um, uh, immigrant workers in Beijing who just had so little um, documentary talking to kids who has um, mostly a mental illness that was not fully recognized even by the family. It would just help me to look at people from a just a very different way. I think I still today benefit from that. 